At Battery Bill, we power everything by battery. It's not if an emergency happens, but when. Are you ready? Be prepared for this hurricane season. Having backup power ready for these necessities, home, refrigerator, and phone are essential for peace of mind to have uninterrupted power during an emergency. Do you need an affordable, reliable backup power solution? We have it. Goal Zero, Jackery, and EcoFlow. Reliable, innovative, and affordable. Power when you need it. Battery Bill, Mapuna Puna, Nimitz, and Hilo. Battery Bill. All right, how's it going, everybody? We welcome you to episode 113 here on Hawaii Football Now. Jordan Helly Hunter Hughes back with you. That's right, episode 113. Uh, and glad to be back with our guy, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan Salvador producing this podcast. Uh, happy to have him back with us. Uh, love you, man. And uh, he will be uh, making sure this is all stitched together and ready to go and uh, ready for you as we usually release this on Thursdays. Uh, this will come out on Thursday, Wednesday, uh, excuse me, Thursday, October 26th. We record this Wednesday, October 25th, just after 7 a.m. Hawaii time. Big thanks to Spectrum Mobile Hawaii USA, Federal Credit Union and battery bill but uh yeah wanted to welcome back jonathan wanted to give a big shout out to jaron as well uh for filling in while jonathan was away so we kind of got the, the the family back together again we're whole uh if you will right here on hawaii football now we'll get into the uh disappointing road loss for hawaii this past weekend as the bows fall to the lobos 42 21 at new mexico and then the second half We'll look forward to homecoming uh, in uh, multiple meanings of the word as Hawaii takes on Chevin Cordero and San Jose State this week, Saturday, uh, over at Ching. Uh, but before we get going, I want to remind you that Hawaii Football Now is brought to you by Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. Originally opened in 1936 as a credit union for educators, Hawaii USA has inspired a culture of giving that is rooted in education and has since become Hawaii's largest credit union and expanded to other areas of community need that impact financial health, including healthcare, housing, and hunger. To learn more, please visit HawaiiUSAFCU.com. All right, game time here. We'll just go right into it on episode 113. There's a lot to talk about. Obviously, you know, tough to put a little bit of a positive spin on a, a road loss, a three-touchdown road loss that honestly maybe wasn't even close as that. Uh, Hawaii losing 42-21, to 21, getting worked on the road at New Mexico. Uh, the Lobos win outright as one and a half point underdogs. The total goes over 60 and a half. Hawaii now two, five, and one this season against the spread, two and six, obviously, overall. Uh, and uh, the over hitting five times, five and three, uh, the over in their games. Uh, I bring that up. Uh, Hawaii was nine and four against the spread last year, even though they only won three games on the field. So uh, a bit of a troubling trend, if you will, there. Uh, Hawaii. Stop me if you've heard this before, Hunter. Just kidding. Don't stop me because you uh you would. Uh UH trailing 14 to nothing, 28 to 7. Uh it was 28-14 at halftime, and then it was 42-14 uh for a bunch of that fourth quarter before Hawaii scoring um in the final seconds. I think it was with like eight seconds left or something like that. Uh one positive, maybe. Uh just two penalties for 30 yards, two sacks allowed. Other than that, um it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. This is a game that Hawaii went into, again, as favorites. This is a game I think a lot of folks circled on the calendar uh, as a likely win for Hawaii when the season started. I know we both had this as a win uh, when we went through game by game and gave our season prognostication. It was a game where Hawaii was looking to snap a winless streak on the road under Timmy Chang. Um, that streak continues. New Mexico had a couple of dubious streaks themselves. Um, had lost double digit games at home uh, in Mountain West Conference play. I uh, had lost a number of games in Mountain West Conference play and then an even longer streak in home conference losses. Uh, they hadn't won a Mountain West game at home since like 2021 uh, and thoroughly looked the better team for the majority of this football game. Um, maybe a better team than their record has shown uh, just based on what they were doing offensively. They seem like they have a nice identity. They seem like they know what they want to do on that side of the football. Defensively, they they held Hawaii's um, attack in check for the most part, a Hawaii attack that got on, um, you know, got loose a little bit against San Diego State, throwing for over 400 yards. That wasn't the case this week. They weren't able to put up the points like we saw against the Aztecs. And so 
you know, it's uh, it's one of those games that that feel a little extra harsh, right? Uh, it's quite the gut punch uh, to get to automatic bowl eligibility. Hawaii would have to run the table in their final five games, uh, at least go four and one to give themselves a chance at six and seven. That's a long cry as they sit at two and six right now. And, and I think you've heard a lot of the chatter in the days since, obviously, you know, we record this midweek, uh, kind of at the halfway point between games, if you will. But uh, it is... It is a lot of doom and gloom right now, Hunter, uh, based on this performance. And it's kind of hard to blame the Hawaii fans. Uh, there have been those that, uh, you know, kudos to them that have, you know, been steadfast, that have tried to put a positive spin on this. Uh, that even those that haven't necessarily put a positive spin on this, you know, reiterating support and things like that, which I think is great for Coach Chang at the guys. But this is um, this. So this was a rough one. This was a rough one. And, and I think a very sobering one at the same time. Yeah, I don't know if there, unfortunately, was ever a time in that game where I felt like we had it. Uh, I come right out of the gate, and uh, we turned the ball over. And before you know it, it's 14-0. Um, and we were trying to play catch-up ever since then. Um, I mean, we, we, we've we known for... <laughs> I don't know the entire time Hawaii's ever had a football team that we don't do well on the road. We kind of never have. Um, so in that regard, it wasn't shocking that we might've uh, not come away with a dub, but this was completely the other narrative. This was playing a New Mexico team that uh, really outplayed us on just about every facet of the game. Jordan, um, I I don't know of a way to to spin it any better than that. I mean, they had two hundred in the air, two twenty seven on the ground, and Hawaii had three picks. That uh, that's not going to bode well statistically if you're going to go and try to win some football games. Um, again, we we've uh, continued to do better on the personal foul side. We've done better on the um uh offensive um uh penalties as well we've we've kind of cleaned that stuff up but when it comes to um production uh getting the ball into the end zone and keeping opposing teams out um we've got a uh a shimp that is that is taking on a lot of water right now unfortunately that's just just where our our team sits right now and uh i i really wish it was a different story but um that's that's kind of the way the uh the crookie crumbled over uh in uh in albuquerque my friend yeah it was you know last week it was one of those games and, and we talked about it at length uh on our previous episode you know it was it was disappointing for sure uh the fact that they lost that game against the san diego state team that is nearly what it has been over the last few years but there were also a lot of really encouraging things, you know, yeah. I, I thought the way the defense started the game against San Diego state, uh, obviously Hawaii putting up the numbers that they did offensively, uh, seemingly figuring some things out um, in the run and shoot in, in how they wanted to efficiently attack teams. Uh, but we, I, it seemed like a lot of regression against New Mexico. Uh, and quite honestly, you know, and, and this isn't an excuse for Hawaii at all, because, look, they, they shouldn't be getting blown out by a New Mexico program that is still very much building. Um, that Mexico State team might be, I mean, excuse me, that New Mexico team might be better than San Diego State but based on a lot of what we saw. But it yeah. was it was back to a lot of the the old habits, man, or or just a lot of the same markers that have indicated Hawaii being a ways away from getting to where they want to go, right? Uh, the the five straight touchdowns allowed, basically. Um, the only possession of the first six that didn't result in points was the end of the half for New Mexico, where they ran one play and then the clock ran out. Uh, but four straight touchdowns to start the game, and then they score on the first possession out of halftime. And so that's that's 35 straight points, man. That's, that's hard to compete against. I get it. College football has become a high-scoring game, and and you're going to get in some shootouts and things like that, but that there there was there was nothing. And, and the other the other 
very troubling part, right? You, you saw some missed tackles and things like that. They were on the field a lot. Um, New Mexico basically had nine true possessions, nine real possessions, right? 11 if you count the two end of halves where they basically just ran off the clock. They scored touchdowns on six of those nine. That's not a great percentage. And, and the other thing was Hawaii never really gave up a, a huge play. Like all, all the six of those scoring drives, at least seven plays. And that's that wasn't quite how I remembered it in the game. It kind of just seemed like, boy, they're scoring again, right? But but then you go back and kind of look at the box score, you look at the drive chart. Um, seven plays or more on every single touchdown drive. So they just kind of had their way, right? And that that almost was more concerning to me than anything. If you give up the big play, it's like, all right, look, we we shut that off, we figure out a way to, to prevent the play over the top, or we tackle a little better, prevent the big running play, or whatever it was. It was it was a little more than that. Uh, New Mexico kind of had pushed their pushed their weight around uh, and ran the ball really effectively. Um, had a nice complimentary play action passing game. Uh, again, looked like an offense, and they they've been scoring a lot, right? They their their points per game average is up basically two touchdowns from last season. Like they are much improved under Danny Gonzalez, and they have done uh, I think a really nice job of finding pieces that sort of fit what they want to do offensively. Um, but six out of nine possessions ending in touchdowns all of them being basically methodical marches down the field uh all of them at least I, I try to pull up the drive chart here again but all of them were at least over 50 yards i think on all the scoring drives yeah. for new mexico yeah 70 seven plays 70 yards 11 plays 55 yards eight plays 75 yards seven plays 62 yards 12 plays 75 yards eight plays 80 yards those were the touchdown drives yeah. they weren't short fields they weren't quick bombs. They weren't explosive plays. They just kind of imposed their will on this Hawaii defense. Uh, and I get it. It's banged up. They're, they're missing a lot of guys, especially sort of in that second level, right, uh, at linebacker, uh, kind of those nickel backs. Um, but that, it, was, it was troubling. It was troubling. There's, there, there wasn't a whole lot um out there Isaiah Tufanga is doing his best Peter Manoma those guys racking up tackles uh in part because they're on the field so long but it was a defense that I, I thought played a lot better against San Diego State and then and then this week against New Mexico it, it it looked like the team you know last year against New Mexico State it looked like the team maybe first half against New Mexico State this year they just they, they don't take the football away as well you know, that 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 really kind of hurts if you're going to give up a lot of drives. Uh, you can you can make up for some of those deficiencies with turnovers, Hawaii losing that battle again. Uh, in fact, they're last in the country in terms of turnover margin, uh, literally dead last. Uh, they're also dead last in rushing offense. And we'll get to the offense here in just a bit. But Hunter, the, I, I, it was it was tough. It was tough to swallow because it was just like getting beat over the head time and time again. Every single time New Mexico got the football. Yeah, you know. New Mexico normally, whenever we play those guys, are not um, situationally sound. Uh, it's usually a sloppy kind of football. Uh, they usually turn the ball over. Um, can you a lot of more like what we saw from San Diego State, where didn't really expect much from their offense. Every time they stepped on the field, it was like these guys aren't anything special. Um, it was almost like those two teams kind of switched roles traditionally, if uh, if you know what I'm saying, Jordan, in terms of what we're we're used to seeing from those two opponents. Um, I was impressed with Dylan Hopkins, their their quarterback. Um, twenty for twenty five, two hundred yards and three touchdowns is a solid day at the office. Solid day. Um, they had a couple of dudes on the outside as well. Um, again. Going into this season, we thought that we were going to have potentially one of the best uh, cornerback uh, duos in all of the Mountain West. And uh, they kind of uh, got taken advantage of this last weekend. So it's just, it's unfortunate. Uh, certainly, this uh, this team is looking to brush the dust off of their feet and uh, continue heading forward. But um, we got to be better, Jordan. There's uh, there's no if, ands, ors, or buts about it. We have to 
look ourselves in the mirror, like my 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 good friend R.J. Hollis uh, said in his uh, uh, Monday recap, and across the board, we just have to execute better. Um, I don't care who goes out there. We can't throw three picks. We can't. Uh, we have control over that. Um, we got to be better there. Um, we can't fumble the ball the way that we have. Um, defense, we got to get some pressure on some opposing quarterbacks. Uh, even if they play for New Mexico, you give division one quarterbacks time, they will dice you up. That's just what's going to happen. If we don't pressure those guys, uh, they're going to tear us apart. We only have one sack this game. Um, only a handful of hurries. And that um, is felt in the lack of turnovers that we aren't able to produce. And I think to me, Jordan, that's been the the glaring stat for this season has been our inability to come up with the football on the defensive side. Um, it really affects our ability to uh, handle the, uh, the possession game. Uh, it, it really kind of stacks things against us to, um, um, to gain momentum and get the offense back on the field. It, it feels way more like, um, you know, if we, go out there and get three and out the defense has to regain uh energy and and kind of go out there and do something truly special to uh kind of arm wrestle the the, the team you know back into a place of of winning in a place of um uh putting them back in the driver's seat we we've been on the uh we've been kind of on the, the passenger side of the majority of the football games that we've played in this year and not been in control. And I think a lot of that has to do with our inability to, uh, to turn the ball over. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I think, you know, that and the slow starts for the offense, um, you know, the fact that they just can't do anything in the first quarter, same thing again, right. At 21, seven, uh, or was it 14, seven after the first quarter? Uh, yes, but basically, right, they fall down 14 to nothing again. Uh, it was 17 to nothing against um, San Diego State the week before. Where, like, they just continue to dig these holes. Uh, and, and the defense has been unable to, to steal possessions back uh, based on turnovers. Uh, you think back to the, the San Diego State game, right? It was a pick six. Like, that's not the defense's fault. Uh, but they just the, Hawaii's propensity to turn it over on offense and and lack of um, turning it over with any sort of regularity on defense. And again, the, the the numbers back up. I think what we've been seeing, right? There's 133 teams that play FBS football. They're dead last in turnover margin. That's what we've seen. Um, they're also dead last in rushing yards per game at 57.8. Uh, they are 13th in passing uh, at over 300 yards per game. I guess that's a but they're, you know, and, and you mentioned RJ, but it was a shout out to uh, our guy, Rob DeMello as well, uh, did, did some of the deep dive research on, on some of the numbers, but uh, they're basically 118th or lower in, in rushing and turnover margin, but also in sacks, in third down conversion, in third down defense, in red zone defense. Like a lot of the numbers would point to a team that is two and six at this point, that points to a team that, that isn't doing very, very well. Um, and again, right, like we, we you can try and put a positive spin on this. Like you pointed out, they've cut down a lot on the turnovers, uh, excuse me, on the penalties, especially the discipline penalties. And that's a testament to them. Right. And, and that's a testament to the coaching staff. They have been better about that. Um, they're allowing fewer sacks than they were in terms of, you know, per game than they were earlier in the season. Um, but it, it's it's not great right now. Like it, it, It's really not. And, and maybe we can transition to the offensive side of things here. Uh, for an offense that looked like it had turned a bit of a corner against San Diego State, I would say they've kind of reversed back around that corner. Um, you know, a, a game where they score 21, kind of steal a touchdown late, if you will, or sneak a touchdown late in there. They've only hit the 30-point threshold twice this season. That was against Albany, and that was last week in a loss against San Diego State. They haven't been able to consistently move the football or at least uh, I, I should take that back. They've moved the football at times, 
but they just haven't been consistently able to score. They haven't been able to consistently finish drives, right? And and a lot of that is playing from behind, right? And so often they're they're trailing by multiple scores. And so you see Coach Chang trying to to roll the dice a little bit, trying to to get touchdowns, right? Going for it on fourth down quite often. Uh, yeah. We saw that again this week. Uh, I know you brought it up, Hunter, when we were kind of debriefing before we we started recording here. But uh, I think it was at 21-7, uh, had a chance to maybe kick a field goal up, up to go for it, uh, to extend the drive, maybe get to 21-14. Fourth and three. End up taking a sack on fourth and three, right? And, and you know, if the game's 14-7 at that point, they probably trust Matt Shipley, right? To go kick a field goal, get him within 14-10. Off we move, a little momentum, see if the defense can't get a stop. But, you know, it, it just puts so much pressure on every drive, on every defensive possession, on every offensive possession. Uh, I think we've seen Brent Shager, who has shown a great ability to throw the deep ball, has shown a great ability to strike quickly and and uh, hit on those big plays over the top. I think he is starting to press even more. Um, you know, I think he is trying to – you know, to, to borrow the analogy to hit five run home runs every time right. he's up there uh, and, and and get points back quickly because they are trailing so often and so early and, and they are, they are uh, missing some, some underneath stuff. Uh, I thought he missed some reads on, on Saturday uh, and, and, you know, it's probably a byproduct of a lot of things uh, being sacked at the rate that he's been sacked at, you know, um, maybe being a little, unsure back there in terms of protection and then trying to force the issue and, and trying to make up everything with one play it's usually not a good combination uh and i think we saw that at times where you know you've got guys underneath um that are open that you can take that you can keep drives alive you can keep momentum going uh but he opted to try and take some shots sometimes they worked sometimes they didn't uh but it's it's a precarious existence for an offense to to just try and rely on 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 deep passes over the top you're not you're not it's not very sustainable if you will it's a diet of just candy um you're gonna need the you're gonna need the full food pyramid uh if you're gonna go out and, and execute an offense if you know what i mean and it was just uh it was troubling to see because again i thought the week before they 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 were starting to hit some of those those arrows those hitches those but uh, just curious from your perspective, Hunter, what you saw, what what maybe um, has uh, troubled you about the offense or encouraged you even, uh, but uh, your observations on on the offensive performance from this Saturday. You know, I think this is a, a really good time to kind of uh, shift the conversation a little bit, Jordan, because the offense probably more than on the defensive side the offense is taking on the persona of the coaching staff slash the entire team of trying to make do with a really crappy situation okay like and I might be getting too metaphorical here and if I need to stop that's totally fine but um it feels like we're trying too hard it, it feels like we are almost um trying to be more than what we actually are and just stick i like what you said you know a, a diet of candy when the meat and potatoes of the run and shoot you know at its best creates a lot of layers creates a lot of um uh diversity in uh in the the passing game that um kind of spreads it out on the field a little bit more and yes, we we have landed more 50-yard tosses, um, anything more than 50 yards um, than any other school in the entire country. So we have absolutely, we can hang our hat on that, that we, we've done that as an offense. But as a quarterback, if you're afraid of getting hit, which Shager has gotten blown up this year. I mean, our, our O-line has been horrible. Throw in there. Um, no running game, none, uh, with needing to put a kind of adapted offensive lineman slash running back and solo Vipulu back there consistently. Now I will say they gave him the ball. They let him tote a couple times this, this game against New Mexico. Um, but as an offense, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, 
compare it to the team as a whole with what Timmy's really had to do in a, a very short amount of time, had to be ex- very, very creative with not a lot to work with. Um, if you look at the amount of injuries and the uh, um, the challenges that this offense has had to um, endure this season, um, it's it's not always conducive uh, to winning. Uh, some of our our more prolific uh, pass catchers and uh, and runners uh, have dealt with uh, dealt with injury. I mean, let, let's go back to the beginning of the season. We really thought Jonah Pinoke was going to be our stud um, at the Z, you know, on the, um, uh, the the fourth read. And he's battled serious injuries. We really thought Tylen Hines was going to be the the next great uh, maybe dazzling running back for University of Hawaii football. He's been all but absent this year. Um, throw on top of that, our third down back that we were counting on, Najee bryant Lalay. Um, he's battled injury. Uh, Jordan Johnson. Um, there have just been a, a handful of things that when you just stack them up, you, you almost can't blame Timmy for the, the fourth down efforts, even though statistically you might wonder hey we've got a great kicker throw him out there see what three or four field goals does to the ending score I I I know that I had that thought against um San Diego State because it might have positioned us a little bit differently at the end of that game where hey maybe we are just free to go down there and uh try to score a touchdown so it it's one of those things you're you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't kind of a situation. And the the effort from everybody, offense, defense, special teams, and this coaching staff, the effort is there. It's just, it, it feels like we're running on, uh, um, like we're, we're, we're amping out the, the engine, maxing it out right now. And it's just not performing the way that we need it to. Yeah, it's – I'm with you. Like, the, it's not for lack of effort. That is for That's sure. Right. Um, and, I, and I think some of that is reflected in the reduction in penalties, right? I, I think if if it was a completely lost cause, if it was a team that was uh, – you know, if it was a coaching staff that had lost the team, if you will, you know, um, I think we would see a lot more of the undisciplined stuff, Um it's just the the product on the field, right? And and again, I've I've said this a million times, but the coaching staff is well aware that they need to win football games. <laughs> like as much good as they've done in reconnecting with the community, uh, as good as a job as they have done in trying to up local recruiting and reestablish those connections with uh, with the local high schools and coaches and all that, all all of that stuff, uh, and, and reinstilling pride and everything. Like they know they have to win games. Um, and right now the recipe is not adding up to wins uh, and they've got five more cracks at this thing. And obviously a big one coming up this weekend that we will get into. Um, and so I guess the the biggest thing right now, because this has been an ongoing trend, right? Hawaii has not been great since entering the Mountain West Conference. Um, you know, the, the sports information department puts out some of those notes after the game, right? And another sobering look at it right Hawaii now 28 and 63 it's a 308 winning percentage all time in the mountain west including 12 and 33 on the road um right that's 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 been our existence in the mountain west it was a little better under Rolo but Rolo still had a losing record in conference uh 15 and 17 15 and 18 if you include the mountain west conference title game and so I guess the the question and, and maybe we can kind of wrap up the first half on this hunter is you know how do they how do they put themselves in position to to go and be competitive and and hopefully win a few of these games uh, down the stretch uh, as we as we kind of wrap up the conversation on New Mexico and then transition into San Jose State? But uh, is there anything you see that that can be done that that can be a quick fix? Uh, you, you you likened it to a, a bit of a a boat taking on water, right? It's a lot of guys bailing water at this point and. And I think there are some some structural things that need to change. There are some institutional things that that could be tweaked to help this program out for sure. But that's not happening overnight. That's definitely not happening between now and Saturday. 
against San Jose State. And that's maybe a conversation that we can hold for the end of the season when we will have plenty of time to to look at this thing post-mortem and 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 look forward. But uh are there are there things that you can see that uh that you can point to 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 maybe um you know see a little bit of a different uh outcome on Saturday. So it's not just the players um that need to eat their meat and potatoes. I, I think in some ways the the play calling uh both offense and, and defensively uh could probably get back to more of a base basic um schematic what what are we going to go out there and do meat and potatoes identity um i think that that um kind of blaring the engine at six or seven thousand rpms is felt on the offense defense and special teams at times where we almost shoot ourselves in the foot with trying to get a little too cute or changing up the play calling you, you mentioned it in our kind of pre-game um warm up jordan that uh, we we went to 20 personnel at different times of this uh new mexico game with uh for for those that don't know that's two running backs no tight ends and uh we were trying to play like smash mouth powerhouse football um which is not us that's not our identity um i think they were trying to change it up a little bit um in in weeks past, especially, you know, I think mainly to that San Diego State game and that uh, that Vanderbilt game, meat and potatoes, run and shoot, will move the ball. It just will. Um, I think some of that needs to be trusted with Braden Shager to not take those deep shots all the time, although it's certainly out there and it's tempting. Um, take those shorter routes allow those five, six, seven yards to build your drives and you're one broken tackle away from a 25 yard yards after catch um, completion. So I think in some ways, and it, man, it's tough when, when you've got, when you've got a, a football team that's struggling from the top down, the, the, the feeling from the coaches to the players, the feeling in the locker room, the the feeling from player to player, um, it's a tough environment. It, it's a tough environment that doesn't always um, yield trust. It doesn't always yield a lot of joy. And you're in a situation in the season that things aren't looking great. I'm just being transparent. I've been on a lot of football teams like this. Um, you have to find little victories kind of in the muck uh, while your team is spinning its tires. Um, But that is what I believe what it's going to take for us to ultimately, ultimately be successful is I know it sucks guys. Let's be patient. Let's get back to what um, we've talked about. Let's get back to this identity that, that we've created and try to build this thing back up again and see where we stand at the end of it all. I, I really like the the idea of kind of going back to the basics. Just keep it simple. These guys, you know, we 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 see the talent in flashes at times on both sides of the football. And and, and sometimes you kind of just gotta let them go out and play, right? And and just just put them in positions, keep it simple, uh, let them go out and do it. Uh because some, something's you know you need a little bit of a refresh uh coming off of a loss like this like this it's it's the worst loss in a long time uh, i don't think you can sugarcoat that there were some even in some of the winning years there were some blowouts right uh rollo had a rollo had a couple yeah. uh here and there um you know the, the 2017 BYU season BYU got us in my senior night absolutely yeah got us. yeah that was what year would have that been? Uh, 16, that was, it was 17? 2017. 17? Yeah, there, there was like a like a pretty bad loss to Colorado State, I think, that year as well. Yeah. Um, you know, that was that was the the down year in the Rolo era, if you will. Um, that 2016 team, even though they went six and seven into the bowl game, they but it was consecutive weeks they got shellacked yeah. by San Diego State and Boise State. Um, I know you'll remember that well. Uh, but it, it's it's uh, honestly it's probably the worst. Now you're just plenty. 
Shout yeah, I mean it's 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 the it's the worst loss since Norm's last game, right? That fifty eight to seven debacle against Air Force in front of like five people at Aloha Stadium. Like uh, you know, you got to go back a ways. And I'm not, you know, hopefully this isn't the trend leading down that path or anything like that. But you know, it it, it if it felt, I think for fans, if it felt like the worst loss in a while, I think that's that that was probably an accurate emotional reaction to this. <laughs> Uh, because it was. Uh, some quick numbers before we take the halftime break. Uh, Hawaii throws it for 345 yards. They actually had more first downs than New Mexico in this game, one of those uh, interesting statistical looks at this. But uh, Shager, 33 of 52, 345, threw three touchdowns, uh, but did have the three interceptions and was sacked twice. Uh, Hawaii only ran it for 58. Uh, Landon Sims was the leading rusher for Hawaii. Six carries, 34 yards. Solo by by Pulu ran it twice for 17 yards. Uh, and Chuki Hines on that little end around a carry for eight yards. David, uh, David Cordero ran it once for seven. Jordan Johnson, two for five. Um, and uh, receiving-wise, Stephen McBride continues to be, you know, just Mr. Reliable. Five catches, 75 yards, two touchdowns. Pofeli Ashlock, four catches, 39 yards, and a touchdown. Those two guys, I think, have been amongst the – the real bright spots for this team. Jonah Pinoke as healthy maybe as we've seen him in a while. Five catch, 53 yards. I thought he did a nice job. Jalen Walthall, two grabs, 48 yards. Alex Perry, five grabs, 48 yards. Kuali Nishigaya, four, four grabs, 40 yards. Uh, Nick Senecal, five catches for 24 yards. Uh, Landon Sims also had two for 12. And Carson Makuna, one for six. They were spreading the ball all over the place, I'll tell you that, um, in this ball game. Defensively, Isaiah Tufanga, 12 tackles. Jalen Smith, nine. He is continued to emerge Peter Monoma with seven uh Jalen Smith and Andrew Troy credited with half a sack a piece four total tackles for loss for this group as well all right uh that'll kind of put a bow on things we will take a quick break and then come back with the second half we'll look forward to San Jose State with homecoming coming up this Saturday this is Hawaii football now from ESPN Honolulu All right, back here on episode 113, Jordan Hunter with you. Hawaii taking on San Jose State this weekend in uh, homecoming for the Vos and homecoming for Chevin Cordero as well, former quarterback for the University of Hawaii. San Jose State is a 10-point favorite in this one. Uh, they are 3-5 and five overall this season. So Hawaii, 10-point dogs at home to a 3-5 and five team. The total is 60 and a half. Uh, the series all-time tied. 22-22 uh, and one tie overall between these two. Uh, Hawaii, interestingly enough, 41-29 and one all-time in homecoming games, including a five-game win streak, so a little positive spin on things. Maybe Hawaii can keep that streak going uh, as the teams will battle for the Dick Tomey Legacy Trophy. Of course, one of the big storylines here is going to be Chevin Cordero, right, uh, who started 23 games for the Rainbow Warriors from 2018 to 2021. That's a fair amount of games. You remember, he played in a quite a few more games where he would come on in relief for Cole McDonald. Right. Um, and I forget the, I, I'm not exactly sure the number, but it's gotta be at least 30 career games that he appeared in uh, with 23 starts uh, and is still the only quarterback in program history to throw for three, 6,000 yards and uh, to rush for over a thousand yards in his career. Uh, so very, very rare air there uh, amongst the, the, the pantheon of great Hawaii quarterbacks. And so Hawaii comes in uh, desperately, in need of some positive results. Uh, a win would be spectacular for sure. Uh, but playing better than they did against New Mexico would be priority number one, I think. Uh, so what do you make of things before we dive into some of the numbers here, Hunter, uh, as the Bows take on San Jose State? And uh, they played Chevin last year uh, up in San Jose, but this will be a little bit different uh, as he comes back home. Yeah, uh, just right off the bat, this is a much different San Jose team uh, than what they were last season. I think uh, to begin the year, they were kind of picked to finish in the top four. Uh, they they were supremely favored to uh, come out and do some special things. And a lot of that had to do with uh, Shevin coming back for his, his final season. Um, he was picked to potentially even be the Mountain West Offensive Player of the Year preseason. And there was a lot of uh, kind of understandable hype over what this San Jose team was going to be it's been kind of a different season for them now granted they've had to play SC 
and uh, a ranked Oregon State team who uh, both kind of handled them. Um, but then, uh, you know, comparatively suffered some some tough losses to Toledo, Air Force, and Boise, um, and uh, haven't quite panned out the, the, the way that a lot of folks kind of thought they were going to. Um, with that being said, they have kind of righted the ship and have won their final two games um, and are kind of on, I don't know if you can call it a hot streak, Jordan, but in some ways are definitely on the winning side of things. So um, we knew this was going to be a tough game heading into this season. And the the fact that it was going to be homecoming, um, it's going to be an emotional environment, Jordan, down on the sideline. I, you and I talked a little bit off screen. I can't recall there being a matchup like this the entire time that I've been around the program. Uh, Maybe even in the history of Hawaii football, because the transfer portal really wasn't much of a thing uh, up until the last few years. Uh, There used to be so many hoops that you'd have to jump through um, even if you did have a good reason to transfer, the NCA did not uh, was not in the business of supporting uh, student athletes to change schools and kind of uh, be the free agents that they are now. Um, and so rarely would we get an opportunity to play a former starter, uh, let alone a former quarterback and a former leader uh, of our of our team. And so, this uh this matchup really has unprecedented kind of stakes uh when you consider that and i know that i know that i know this this game means a ton to the boys for hawaii um this th- this means a lot to mainly our our guys on the defense um and going out and tr- and trying to stop this guy now before before I go any any further, I, I want it to be abundantly clear. I got nothing but love for Chev, man. Um, I trained with him whenever he was an incoming freshman from St. Louis uh, down at Tactical Fitness in Kakaako. Um, have I've thrown with him many times. Uh, have real history with with, with this kid and uh, with my relationship with uh, with Cole McDonald and um, the subsequent relationship with him on that team those rollo years i got a lot of love for this kid and was really excited to see him succeed over in san jose after some really unfortunate couple of seasons uh more with uh off the field kind of stuff uh regarding the the graham era um but let me remind folks it was not good it was not good during that Graham era. And you, you had a great kid, phenomenal football player who could run and throw at a clip that you hardly ever see coming out of Hawaii. Um, and had Shevin not left our team, we would not have Timmy Chang as our head coach right now. Uh, we, we would not be kind of experiencing the... Uh, um, the 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 goodness that that we are experiencing in the community with relation to Hawaii football the way that we are right now had Shevin not been the first domino to cause the chain reaction that we experience now um and so I I wanted to kind of bring that back up again for the Hawaii faithful that will go to this game and I I understand it's kind of a a flux of emotions for a lot of folks you know um, having a, a former Hawaii quarterback playing for someone else, you can almost feel like, how dare he, how, you know, he's, he's betrayed us, but let, let's keep it all in perspective. Let's remember that, uh, that this is uh, a college athlete, a young man who uh, represented and, and played for us greatly in, in the past. And man, Jordan, I, I, I gotta be transparent, man. It would break my heart to hear booze for that guy. Cause he does not deserve it. Um, he does not deserve it at all. Um, and yeah, obviously we, we want to play well against our opponents. He he's on the other team. Um, but he deserves aloha 
whenever he comes back and plays us this Saturday. Yeah, I'm with you. I think a lot of the Hawaii fans are pretty smart, right? We got a lot of Akamai fans and and I think are very aware of what the situation was uh, towards the end of his time at the University of Hawaii. Um, And yeah, when we were talking, I I couldn't quite think of uh, a situation like this before, right? Uh, Whether it had been a player or even a coach, right? Uh, Coach Tomey came back and coached some games, but that was when he was with San Diego State. I I couldn't remember, uh, excuse me, San Jose State. And I couldn't remember uh, uh, any games when he was at Arizona uh, where he, he took on Hawaii. Right. And, and so that was a little bit more, it was obviously quite a time removed from, from his University of Hawaii days when he was um, the head man for the Spartans. Uh, June never came back and played. He played in the Hawaii Bowl, coached in the Hawaii Bowl, I should say, but it wasn't against yeah. Hawaii. Um, you know, and, and the the closest thing I could think of, and I'm probably missing some, and, and our astute listeners and, and viewers will probably drop us a line on uh, social media. Back on YouTube, by the way, and uh, thanks for all the love, uh, the folks dropping lines and comments on our youtube channel but uh it's maybe some of those byu teams you know when when norm was the offensive coordinator when they had that thing humming they had a lot of hawaii guys always had a lot of hawaii guys the critical bears of the uh, of the time uh that would come back home and uh for a while you know kind of take it to hawaii uh, before that cathartic breakthrough um you know back in the late 80s and so it, yeah it, it, this is this is pretty pretty rare uh i would say and 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 you know for shevin to leave it took a lot uh yeah. i think a lot of people know that i think they've they, you know you've heard him uh in in some some media interviews and things of that nature and it wasn't necessarily um his issue with the the fan base it definitely wasn't with his teammates or anything like that uh it was a little deeper uh and he hasn't necessarily come out and said it or anything like that but uh, i think you know there wasn't quite the uh, the foundational support uh and and we know what happened after his transfer right that that led to a, a whole slew of things uh and that ultimately led to the resignation of Todd Graham um and I think you know for for those around the program was probably a necessary change the way things were trending even with some of the results on the field maybe resulting in a few more wins than we've seen uh but just the exodus of players was was deeply concerning and obviously when you're starting quarterback a guy who started 23 games um leaves that's that's going to be the the biggest eyebrow raiser if you will and so you know I, I think a lot of Hawaii folks still have a lot of aloha for him uh I obviously him being the the local kid right he isn't somebody who came to Hawaii and then left right. uh, he's a guy who grew up in Hawaii grew up in a lot of ways in that uniform after his time at St. Louis and, and I, I optimistically I think he'll get a pretty warm reception uh, when he's out there, once everything, everything's kicked off, right? The game's the game. Uh, you get into it and you go. Uh, but yeah, it, it's going to be, it's, it's you know, unique's maybe an overused term, uh, but I, I, I can't think of a whole lot of other instances where, uh, you know, you got your former starting quarterback coming home, as as you pointed out, right? The, the portal has made things a lot different than it was for the vast majority of college football history. Totally. And, you know, this game against San Jose is it's a trophy game played for the Dick Tomey trophy now. Um, it, you're playing more for pride, though. Like, they're, they're, I, I can't describe it enough. There's so much riding on this game for for our guys wanting to beat him. And I'm sure uh, the, the, the feeling's got to be felt uh, on the other side of the football as well in, in some some ways. It's obviously different, but... This is going to be um, – I I could see this kind of being a chippy, kind of uh, hard-nosed environment, Jordan, uh, th- this game on Saturday. And, um, you know, it's not the San Jose team we thought we were going to see, but in some aspects, we're still going to need to score. Um, I, I could see Chev uh, putting on a show against us, and so – with that being said, and our, our defense is also gettable, um, we're going to need to get at least 30, I think, to keep up with these guys this weekend if we're uh, going to stand a, a chance against the Spartans. Yeah, we'll look at uh, some of the numbers here for San Jose State. There had been a little bit of animosity between the programs, right? You remember, uh, I think it was during the Graham era, right? They, the, the social oh, yeah. media, it was more the social media team. Yeah. 
at San Jose State, right? The, they they came in, beat Hawaii, and they're like, you can't spell Honolulu without the L uh, and things like that. It wasn't necessarily like the players. It was more the, you know, it was it was a thing uh, yeah. there for a little bit. I think that's been tamped down a little bit. Um, be, I think in part because their head coach, right, Brent Brennan, is is a, you know, former Hawaii guy. Uh, and, and he also has a lot of love for the program. Uh, and it has been a friendly rivalry in that sense. Uh, definitely one filled with mutual respect um, from from their head man. San Jose State three and five overall, as you pointed out, Hunter. Right, started one and five. A uh, couple of those losses coming to to Pac-12 powers, and and they've kind of rebounded here, winning two in a row, fifty two twenty four at New Mexico, and then last week forty one twenty one at home against Utah State. They are two and two overall in the Mountain West Conference. Beat Hawaii last year twenty seven to fourteen up in the Bay Area. Uh, in a year they went seven and five overall have kind of routinely been in that bowl conversation under Brent Brennan lost the uh, the always exciting famous Idaho potato bowl 41 27 to eastern Michigan I always get a kick out of some of these bowl games you know because you usually get rewarded with the bowl game and you go play in like a nice warm weather city you know you get the a little extended uh, a season and kind of a Christmas break and then there's then there's the teams that have to go to Idaho there's the teams that play in like the pinstripe bowl at Yankee stadium in December. Like, yeah, it's not quite the same experience as going to the Hawaii bowl or maybe the holiday bowl or something like that. But uh, yeah, that was uh, San Jose state season last year. To your point, Hunter, they do score over 30 points per game, 32.8 points per game. They do allow 30.9 points per game, but a lot of those numbers maybe skewed a little bit defensively based on that USC game where they gave up a, a ton of points. Uh, they run it. For 161 yards per game, and they throw it for 227. Pretty balanced team. Uh, they allow 196 rushing yards per game, but only give up 182 passing yards per game. So uh, a little bit interesting going into uh, the Hawaii game, as Hawaii obviously so much tilted toward the pass. Uh, that's 385 yards. That's uh, 388 yards of total offense. They give up 380 yards of total offense on defense. Here's another interesting stat for you, Hunter. Hawaii terrible in first quarter. San Jose State really good. Uh, they've outscored opponents 55 to 20 in first quarters. That maybe doesn't bode well for Hawaii, but uh, an interesting note there. Uh, Shevin is their leader, obviously, completing over 61% of his passes, has thrown it for 1,738 yards. That's just 217 yards per game. Been kind of methodical. They've run the ball pretty well this season, as we pointed out. He's got 11 touchdowns and three interceptions. Also rushed it for three touchdowns. Hasn't run a whole lot this year. Uh, his rushing numbers aren't eye popping, uh, not necessarily what we were used to uh, him as a Rainbow Warrior. Uh, they, ne they haven't necessarily needed him to do that. Uh, Kyrie Robinson, who I think has been there for 12 years now, uh, is their running back at 573 yards total. He averages over six yards per carry, uh, and he's rushed it for six touchdowns. And then receiving uh, Nick Nash, he's also been there for a while, hasn't he? Uh, five touchdowns for... Uh, San Jose State receiving. Here's uh, this I found pretty interesting, and it's kind of similar story to Hawaii, but they've got six different guys with at least 15 catches. Uh, they've got seven guys with at least 11, and they've got 10 guys uh, with at least eight catches on the season. So they got a ton of dudes who have played, who have caught passes. Obviously, the bulk of that receiver, some tight ends, some running backs, uh, and the like, but it is uh it is an offense that has really spread the football around uh and uh, kind of similar story to what the the University of Hawaii has done uh yeah it's the it's a San Jose State team that that ran away from New Mexico in the second half two weeks ago uh after a fairly competitive first half and then kind of controlled it throughout against Utah State they seem to be improving they seem to have hit their stride a little bit obviously they've got uh their four four games left if they go three and one they'll get to bowl eligibility I think that's their main goal at this point and obviously uh favored by double digits here uh so I, i'm with you i think hawaii's got to score points uh it's a it's a balanced san jose state attack it'll have a lot of emotion to it um and uh homecoming to boot for the university of hawaii so yeah it's going to be uh it's going to be a tall task for a team that seems to be hitting their stride they've scored uh 94 points in the last two weeks hunter yeah um you know with different times this year we've played some some pretty good dual threat quarterbacks. I think about Poffenbarger from uh, UAlbany, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, Diego Pavia from New, New Mexico State. Uh, both of those guys gave our defenses fits. Uh, Chevin's better than both of them. 
Um, we're going to have our hands full taking care of him in the air and keeping him accountable on the ground. Um, I think it truly could be a shootout um, between uh, San Jose and us this Saturday. Um, and I think it might be one of those games determined by who wants it more, truly. Who who wants to go out there and, and make a great play because uh, they're not backing down. They are in a, a unique time in their kind of schedule too where they have three wins with, um, I believe they have five remaining too, Jordan. So they need to kind of put a couple more wins on their body of work to uh, try to secure bowl status as well. So they're not going to be a pushover in the slightest. And uh, they're looking at us um, as probably a circle game. So if we want to do anything differently, Hawaii's got to show up and we got to play championship level football. It's a it's a game where they they have to they have to come out quick I think uh, and that has not been their mo really in any of the first eight games uh, but they got to find a way to they got to find a way to flip that script there uh, getting into some of the comments because uh, we're back on YouTube that's right uh, good to hear from a lot of you uh, Scott Al from VDA uh, our guy Leonard uh, uh, a couple of others as well some of them uh, surprised to see us back on YouTube so I'm glad you guys are still. I don't know if they got like a notification or they logged on to YouTube and they're like, oh, look at these guys. They're back. Um, and so it's, uh, as you would expect, uh, we, we don't necessarily have time today uh, on the extended conversation to get into some of the details. But uh, yeah, a lot of questions, right? Uh, transfer portal. Um, uh, are we going to see some elevated roles for some guys? Uh, Al from VA, as always, asking about uh, Eddie. Okay, Katia, uh, likely will be redshirting for the remainder of the year. He's like, hey, we're going to get him for four games, anything like that? I, I, I don't know if that's in the cards. Um, Al even saying, just line him up at edge and have him rush the quarterback. No no tackles blocking that guy, right? Uh, coming around the edge. <laughs> hey, uh, I, will, I will say there's no one with more energy on the sideline than Eddie. Nobody. Nobody with more energy. He's ready to hit somebody, man. I, 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 I am all for him running down on kickoffs or something. Uh, eventually uh, getting a chance to return. Uh, we will get into uh, more of the comments as we go throughout, uh, as we uh, we get used to having the, the YouTube interactions again. Uh, that is a nice little treat for us there. Um, uh, Steven Sy tweeting out, uh, I think we've seen it reported a couple of other ones. Uh, we mentioned transfer portal and things like, I don't know exactly what the situation is, uh, but uh, Jordan Johnson uh, apparently no longer with the team. Uh, had been getting some significant run at running back. Uh, so some uh, some news there for sure uh, for a backfield that uh, has been shorthanded, that has been pretty banged up with the injuries to Tylen Hines and Najee bryant Lillet, and uh, now no Jordan Johnson as well. I'm not, we, we didn't get any more concrete details if he's like in the portal or, or what the, the exact situation is there, but uh, did want to pass along that uh, before we head on out of here. Any final comments, uh, Hunter, before? Uh, we wrap this thing this thing up on San Jose, or uh, should we transition on out of here? Uh, one real quick note on the transfer portal. I know it's a part of our our, our game nowadays, but it is not any more advantageous for college athletes to transfer in the middle of the season. You're not going to play anywhere this year. Um, mm -hmm. Even all the way back to a guy like Grayson Morgan. Um, the coaches on the next team that you go and play for will always do their due diligence and call your previous stop and wonder, why did he leave early? So again, there's any number of reasons for guys to leave, but if this ever reaches the ear of college football players out there, stick it out, stick it out through the season. It's better for future relationships with um, um, your previous coaches uh, future relationships with your teammates. There, there, there is no reason to have any sort of bur uh, bridges burned from previous teams. Stick it out. And that goes for coaches too. Uh, the, the way that, um, uh, what's his name? The the Notre Dame coach who as a, who's at LSU now left in the middle of the year. Um, Brian, Brian Kelly. Kelly. Um, that goes for everybody finish out the year with the team that you're on. It just bodes well for everybody. Um, that's, that's my final word, Jordan. Uh, part, part of my, my 
least favorite part of one of the best times of the college football season. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, one final note before we head on out of here. Uh, shout out to uh, Coach Bud, Rainbow Bohemian soccer team. They qualified for the Big West tournament uh, after getting a home win last week. Thursday uh, nearly defeated first place Cal Poly uh, before a couple of late Cal Poly goals this past Sunday. Uh, they could finish anywhere from one to six. Uh, it's a six-team tournament. Uh, only basically half the conference makes it. They have assured themselves of that. They play at Long Beach State. Uh, that's tomorrow, Thursday, so the same day this pod comes out. Uh, it's on ESPN+. Plus. You can catch that. Uh, depending on that result and a whole bunch of other results, again, they could finish like as the first seed or the sixth seed, and they're, they're in number they're in sixth right now, but uh, a win would, would catapult them up a little bit. There's an outside chance they could host a first-round game on Sunday uh, on Oahu, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, and if they do finish as the number one seed, pretty uh slim chance in that but if they do finish as number one seed they would host the semifinals and finals uh oh. the following weekend so keep an eye out for that uh one of the better uh rainbow Wahine seasons in a while it's been a fun atmosphere down there in yp awesome. i wanted to put that uh well and then on a positive note uh yeah. for one of the teams on campus uh because uh you know it's been a it's been a little bit of a, a downer of an episode rightfully so all right that'll do it for us big thanks to uh spectrum mobile hawaii usa federal credit union and battery bill as well shout out to our guy jonathan on the control shout out to you hunter and shout out to everybody uh for tuning in uh wherever you're listening or viewing and uh thanks for finding us again on youtube we will see everybody back next week uh head on down for homecoming uh see you down at ching as well hello everybody you've been listening to hawaii football now with jordan helley and hunter hughes all from espn honolulu